So the MIS program, a lot of people have heard about it. It's very popular and you heard about it. That's why you are here listening to this video as well. So what makes the MIS degree such a popular option? In fact, in my opinion, it's probably the best degree in terms of job opportunities after a traditional computer science degree. So why is that? What is the degree all about? And is it a good degree for you to pursue while you're watching this video? Well, I'm going to tell you all about it. So stay tuned. Management Information Systems, Information Systems Management, Information Management, MIS, MSIS, MSIM, there are so many different names to this degree. Well, I'm going to tell you that it has little to do with the title and a lot to do with the curriculum. And that's something I'm going to cover in the later part of the video. But what is this degree in general? Well, I'm not going to give you the regular technical jargon that you're going to find on websites. Uh, MIS degrees say that they produce engineers who use data to transform organizations. And that seems like a very fancy thing to do. But what does it mean for you as a student? Well, let me explain. MIS degrees can be used by undergraduate engineers in two ways. Number one is if you come from a non-computer science or a non-coding undergrad program, the MIS degree is a great way for you to break into pure coding roles. Let me give you an example. There might be a lot of you who have done mechanical engineering, civil engineering or electronics and communications degrees who want to break into pure computer science and coding related roles. And obviously, you're finding it a little difficult. You may not be eligible or you may not be able to apply for a pure CS MS program because they require four prerequisites in your undergrad, which you likely don't have. Then the MIS degree is a lovely, lovely degree for you to transition to that role because it gives you core computer science courses in database management systems, data structures and algorithms, and a few other prerequisites that make you eligible for pure coding and even SDE roles after you graduate. So that is one way you can use an MIS degree very, very powerfully. What is the other way you can leverage an MIS degree? The second way is if you're already working in core tech, you're already doing a software development role, and you don't want to code anymore, you want to transition into a slightly more middle management or senior management level, then the MIS gives you that option as well. If you're looking to move into product management or project management roles, again, within the tech sector, there is enough of a tech management heavy curriculum at most MIS programs that would allow you to make this transition. Therefore, this is what the MIS degree is. A lovely degree that can help you move into core tech or if you're already in core tech, move into a more tech management role. Now, you might see multiple definitions online which may confuse you. But at the end of the day, this is what the degree means for you. And I hope you found that useful. Okay, so sorry for breaking the flow of the video, but I'm here to inform you of something that you'd absolutely love. We have created a WhatsApp group that has the Gradwine team members active, answering all your queries. And we already have over 1100 members on that group. And that's growing as we speak. If you want to join that WhatsApp group, check out the link in description and join us. There's a lot of engaging discussions and answers happening there. All right, now that you know what this degree is, who should apply for this degree? And I'm going to tell you, based on what I said earlier, if you are a undergraduate candidate from a non-computer science undergrad and you work for one or two years within tech or the IT sector, then you are eligible to apply for the MIS degree. Whether you're applying to continue in tech in the US or any other country of choice or whether you're using it to transfer into a tech management role is completely up to you. But even if you come from a non-computer science undergrad, as long as you have one or two years of full-time work experience, by the time you start the program, it can be a great choice for you and you'll get good opportunities after you graduate. The second way this degree is used, again based on what I told you in the first section of this video, is to move into more tech management roles. Now, if you are a computer science undergrad as well and you don't want to move into a pure management degree or you don't want to move into a pure CS degree because of the amount of coding you have to do, then you can use the MIS to move into techno managerial roles as well. All right, now that I've told you who can apply to the degree, you may have realized that there's a whole wide bunch of candidates who can. It's a degree that's open to all kinds of undergrad. However, if you are somebody with limited or no work experience applying as a fresher, then most MIS programs will not accept you. Very few MIS programs like the University of Washington's MSIM program with the early career track taking freshers. Typically, the good MIS programs and a vast majority of them prefer candidates with about one to two years of work experience at least. In fact, programs like UC Berkeley and UT Austin prefer people with three plus years of work experience. Also, if you are a computer science fresher looking to move into tech roles, then the MIS may not make as much sense for you because a lot of the core courses are something you will have covered in your undergraduate CS program itself. So it may seem a little repetitive. 
only use it to transition to more management heavy roles if you are already holding a CS undergrad with a little bit of work experience. All right, now that I've explained what the degree is, how it helps you in your career transition and who should and should not apply to it, let me leave you at the end of this video with a word of caution. And that word of caution is that not all MIS degrees are the same. And this is something I'm going to address in a full-fledged video. If you want that, please comment below. Some MIS programs are very, very technically heavy. Therefore, the volume of technical electives and therefore the kind of job roles you break into after you graduate are going to vary greatly. Some of these tech heavy programs include Texas A&M, Carnegie Mellon and UC Berkeley. Some other MIS programs are slightly more management heavy. Therefore, the number of electives you can take from slightly more management and less technical courses are going to be far higher. Examples of this would be the University of Washington, which is a wonderfully balanced program and also the University of Arizona, the other school of business. Therefore, don't blindly go by the title of the program. Don't blindly go by perceived rankings. You have to figure out which curriculum you like best and therefore make the choice in terms of what kind of career transition you want. Of course, if you want us to help you understand these curriculums, if you want us to help you shortlist universities based on your profile, we are always around to help. You can schedule a pre-consultation using the link in the description below.